All right, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Explore Builds. Uh, this is the mighty GU. This is the uh, camera car. Pick it off. We're going to do a little bit of a build series. New wheels and tyres completely changes the whole look of your vehicle. <laughs> Alright, g'day everyone and welcome back to another episode of Explore Builds. This time, instead of the Land Cruiser, uh, this is the mighty GU. This is the uh, camera car, the Explore Life camera car. At the moment, we're here at um, Explore HQ. So, um, we'll kick it off. We're going to do a little bit of a build series on the GU. Um, today, I'll probably just give you a quick rundown of um, exactly what it is, what we've done to it up, up until this point, uh, and then run through a few things that we might uh, be doing uh, moving forward, um, and we'll probably do a couple of little things to it today as well. So, um, straight away, it's a 2008 Nissan Patrol uh, GU, so it's got the common rail 3 litre uh, turbo diesel motor. Um, obviously, they're not known for being the best motor, but look, um, I've, I've previously had the 3 litre direct injection. Um, GU Patrol, basically the same as this. Uh, this is the manual. My old one used to be an automatic, um, so the manual actually has a little bit more poke, probably being the common rail as well. Um, at the moment, the motor is completely stock. Um, bit of backstory, we basically needed a camera car to get out in front and follow us around when we're out there trying to film the Explore Life series for you guys. So um, the idea behind this is my photographer, videographer, and uh, I, I now have a videographer helper as well. They jump in the truck um, and this is a place for them to put all their gear, charge all their gear, and, um, and be able to get out and follow us on the tracks. So look, this one's already been, it did all the Tassie, high country, all of season two. Uh, this truck has basically been with us. As is, um, she's pretty bog stock. Um, so look, we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick hot lap of the truck. For those of you guys wondering, it's got about 280,000 when I bought it on the clock. So a shit ton of bloody kilometers. Um, and it only cost me 10 grand. So um, this is almost like a cool little build video if you're, if you're chasing like a good, capable first car or um, something in that lower budget to get you out and about. Um, this is a one hell of a platform to start on. Um, I absolutely love the, the GU Patrol. They're a tough, out-of-the-box truck, uh, great drivetrain. The motor, as long as you sort of look after it, they're not too bad. So, um, at the moment, we're just running the steel, the, the standard wheels. Um, one of the biggest dramas we had um, with, with um, the, the Season 2 was punctures. I think we're up to about four punctures on this truck. As you can see, we're just sort of running, at the moment, a variation of different tyres. So that's uh, one of the first things that we're going to change, because that's been the biggest drama, um, is running some good tyres. So we'll get into that uh, a little bit later on. As we come around the front, uh, we've got an old GME radio in here with a very shitty aerial. It's basically rusted to pieces. Um, so we're going we're gonna to throw a whole new um, GME XRS uh, unit straight in here. That's another major one for us. We need that awesome communication between the camera car and the, the whole convoy, to be honest, when we're out on these big trips. So brand new XRS unit's going to go in. We've got the factory Nissan bar. Uh, I don't know what it is about these, but I just think, I don't know, they're just bloody ugly, in my opinion. Um, so this will be another thing we'll be upgrading. Um, of course, like I've run on every single one of my trucks and what I had on the last GU, um, we'll be running a ARB bar. Um, so we'll have that going shortly. These spotties, I think they're old Narvas by the looks of them, or maybe even bloody cheaper. Oh yeah, old Narvas. So um, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade these as well because we do do a fair bit of that um, uh, late night driving when we're trying to push to destinations while filming. Um, Something that uh, I haven't got on the camera car and something that we have needed and I, uh, I will probably look at doing is throwing a winch on it as well. So we're making sure that that ARB is a winch capable bull bar. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep moving around the truck. Uh, it's still got the factory side steps. Suspension wise, this thing's running a um, just a two inch suspension lift. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything too wild um, for, for the camera car. Um, but look, it's... It's, uh, we've put some freewheeling hubs on the front there. Uh, that's one thing that we changed. 
and at the moment it's running, um, I think it had superior shocks and, and we've, we've just had to change out the, the front ones. I think they've got some Oztech. So we've actually got some pretty epic plans um, for the suspension in this. We've been chatting to the guys from um, Airbag Suspension, Jacob and Benny. We've just been out at Glasshouse Mountains and I've seen how bloody extraordinary their GU Patrol went uh, running full air ride. Um, and it's something that I'd love to love to try and love to have and, and see how that works longevity wise on a vehicle. So bloody excited. Um, we, we're still working out when we're gonna get it done, but hopefully full air ride, which is bloody cool. Um, all right, so if we come to the inside of the truck, uh, basically it's completely standard. Um, the GUs, they're, they're no Land Cruiser. You actually get some things in the GU. So it's got the cruise control. It is a manual, like I said. We've got the old, um, the old UHF radio in there. The rest of this is um, basically 100% um, standard. So nothing exciting. Um, in the back, one thing we have done in the back here is we've actually pulled out um, one of the seats. Um, and this is just a, a, a false floor that we've put in here. And this is just a fully padded box. Um, so the, the way we shoot is very run and gun. So the boys can dump their cameras in here. We've got the Navigator um, rear seat organizer, um, which the boys just load up with different bits and pieces. I will put another one on the other side, probably. I don't know. I think if when we have three people in the car, they like their leg room there. So um, yeah, basically that's one modification that we've already done. Um, up on top, as you can see, this is basically just a, um, uh, a cheap roof rack that, that we had laying around. Um, sneak back over here real quick. We actually hacked off the old rack, made up a bit of a bloody Baja style design, and I had an old light bar laying around, so we threw that up on there. Um, it's not much chop. I'll probably get rid of that roof rack and, and try and go to probably something like a um, Pioneer, um, something that allows me to um, what do you call it? Like lots of different attachments. So we can throw um, multiple bits and, bits and pieces on there nice and easy. Um, hey, Wolf. If we move around the back of the truck, the back still very simple. There's no, no um, aftermarket bar or anything like that on there. Here's, here's a wheel that we actually popped on the last episode. So that was our fourth puncture we've had. Um, if we open up the back, this is where I have done a little bit of work. So, um, the boys at Dunham Watson, I went and seen them. They do full, full packages. But if you ever wanted to do something, you know, a bit unique, you can buy individual bits and pieces off the guys from Dunham Watson. So all I bought was two separate drawers. And then um, we actually made up the frame for the top, which is just a bit of timber. I went and bought some, some car, uh, carpet and some angle. And me and Berkey actually knocked this up. Uh, up on top, we've got the um, Dunham Watson fridge slide as well. Now, the camera crew really like to have as much space as possible. So this is something most trips that doesn't even run a fridge. We literally use it to put camera gear on nice and easy to slide out. Um, by, by doing our own draw system, we're able to leave this side all free for all of like our tripods and bits and pieces. And then um, up on top, another massive big foam box all padded up um, for some of our bigger uh, camera equipment. We can drop that straight in for the camera guys. So basically this drawer here comes out um, and we, we have a little charging station that normally goes in here and um, we can run off the 700 watt um, Red Arc inverter. So that thing, only 700 watt. So out of this truck, we normally, it's just your GoPro batteries, your camera batteries, all those bits and pieces. And then I also have a, a big hua. I got the 2000 watt Red Arc inverter in my, uh, my truck, which um, if we ever need to charge more things, or um, something that draws a little bit more power. But for a, for a nice little unit, 700 watts, it's super compact, tucks down the side beautifully there. Um, and that, you know, that basically charges all the gear they've got. We got a USB outlet and two cigarette, uh, two, two USBs and one cigarette lighter output up here as well. And we've just chucked a little volt gauge in here. Um, so all really basic and simple, but clean and, um, and, and really effective. So. Under the bonnet, I'm running a Red Arc um, isolator, which uh, charges my secondary battery. Um, and then, you know, that's what the inverter and these outputs all run off. So while we're charging all of our camera equipment, we can never drain that main battery because we've got the Red Arc system um, isolating those two batteries. 
Um, so, th so that's a bloody good little um, system if you're looking at um, a first car or, or a, a, a basic setup to just get you out there. Obviously my 76 is, um, you know, uh, the full spectrum for really long range touring. This is a great little system, Red Arc isolator, Red Arc inverter, and a couple of power outlets in the back. And basically you're away, you can run your fridges, you can charge your gear, um, you're sort of happy days. So that's basically the major modification that we had done to this truck already, was a set of uh, good draw systems. Um, <clears throat> once again, Dun & Watson, all aluminium, so quite lightweight, and you know, this thing's traveled most of Australia already. Um, from Tassie all the way up to um, the Northern Territory and hasn't missed a beat. We'll keep cruising. What do we got? That, oh, one sneaky little modification that I threw on um, last week before I got to start filming this little episode was tinted windows. So I've gone for the Ambo black tint on the rear um, and then the darkest legal on the front. This just stops people from sort of prying eyes and the tent that was on it was absolutely shot so I couldn't even see out the window so that was a must. Um, Paintwork on this truck is pretty flat. You've got a few rust stains from the old roof rack that have run down so it needs a bloody good cut and polish um, and basically um, we'll, we'll start throwing a few things on so I think today um, jump over here we'll have a quick look so um, you know I didn't want to go anything too expensive or too fancy with this truck. Once again, this is kind of a budget build. Um, so we're kind of just doing the important things. So I, I've always run steelies. Um, I'll probably go to um, alloys on my new truck, keep that, 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 that weight down. But um, I got onto the boys at Dynamic and um, simple D-hole. I think I'm running D-holes on my truck at the moment. Not sure. <laughs> and um, I just ran D-hole steelies on my old truck as well. So um, that's just, I don't know, personal preference. I, I just wanted something cheap. You're looking at about 110 bucks and it gets rid of the aluminium wheels that I don't really like those stock wheels. Plus they're scratched up and, and, and a bit buggered. So we'll go and take these up to the shop. Now, um, as far as tires have gone, uh, I'm going with a good set of all terrains. So we're going with 285, 65, uh, 285, 75, 16. Uh, these are a 16 by 8 um, BFG um, all terrain. So I'm going with their new uh, all terrains. I run the mud tires on my truck. Um, personally, I do prefer to run muddies all the time, and it's been a long time since I've run all terrains. But I thought I'd love to chuck a set of all terrains on this truck and see how the all terrains compare against the mud tires, which will just be a good little comparison video that I can do down the truck for you guys, um, and then it gives me a good idea of. Um, uh, you know the wear and tear obviously a lot of road kilometers in this truck as well So, um, you know, it's always a big talking point. Do you go all trains? Do you go mud terrains? I'm gonna have one car that's got each and then I'll be able to make a decision and maybe down the track I'll swap to all terrains on my main truck. Who knows? That's about it. I'm gonna get this I'm gonna jump in now I'm gonna run down to the tire shop where I've got my um, BFG tires We'll get them fitted up to the rims. We'll get them on the truck Just just by doing that. It's gonna look like a bloody Whole new truck, They're having beautiful tyres, black rims, black rims, dark tint, white car, happy days. And um, what we'll do is we'll keep bringing you guys updated videos as we're going along. But um, yeah, stage one, let's get into it. BFG all terrains are going on the dynamic rims. Uh, they're getting um, balanced up at the moment and they're about to chuck them back on. Happy days. It is, um, it's bloody crazy actually how as soon as you do a set of new wheels and tires, completely changes the whole look of your vehicle. I love black wheels. I've always loved black wheels. I've had them on most of my trucks. So can't wait to see how it looks. Yeah. All right, there we go. Bloody shit hot. The truck looks better already. Now I'm getting excited. I might have to put a four inch lift kit in this thing and, and uh, 
What do you reckon, Barra Swap or um, LS? <laughs> All right, well, there you go, we're back in the shed. It is absolutely ridiculous how um, set of tent, some nice black tent, and then uh, new wheels and tires completely changes the look of this truck. I actually now love this truck, whereas before, you know, I didn't have too many feelings about it. So um, I'm getting pretty excited about this car. Chances are I'll probably have to get rid of it as a camera car and I'll end up throwing something, something cool in the motor and, and maybe we go four inch and 35s. What do you reckon? Anyway, look, that was just a quick little video to show you guys the truck, what we've already done, and uh, the first little stage of the modifications. That's all we're going to get time for today. Um, if you guys have got any comments, chuck them below. Let me know what motor you think I should throw in this if this one goes bang. Um, and um, if you, if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. We'll bring you guys part two of the Explore Life camera car build uh, as soon as we can. Till then, stay safe uh, and enjoy the Explore Life. Cheers, guys.